Today we're unboxing a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery. You'll have to excuse the awkward angle that you guys are looking at because this thing is just too big for my bench. Uh, but I did want you here as I unboxed it. So this one here is from Lightime. And this was actually purchased on a steep discount because Amazon had a flash deal. Plus there was a coupon. So I got this for not very much. Uh, let's see. Well, we got documentation right off the hop. We're going to take a look at that. There are some post bolts on the very top. They don't want you to throw it out because they have a foam. Oh. Uh, not sure what this ring is for, but we're going to figure that out as well. Um, but they have a foam telling you that your post bolts are in there. Pretty well packaged, pretty good foam. You can see the post imprints there. And this is, there's not gonna be a elegant way to unbox this on my tiny workbench, but here goes nothing. Oh, there's a strap. Well, that's more elegant than I expected. I'm just gonna pull it off camera. Oh my God. And there we go. That's the unit. And while I got, I have you guys on the wide shot, I'm gonna take some measurements here. So it is almost 13 inches. So that's uh, almost 330 millimeters. It is Um, that is 170 millimeters, uh, just about six and five eighths inches. And then depth wise, it is six and a half millimeters, uh, six and a half uh, inches, which is 170 millimeters. Did I measure that twice? Not sure. In height, it is eight and three quarter inches, or about 20, about uh, 220 millimeters. So let me now reposition the camera to something a little bit more comfortable. All right, so let's go over this thing. So in the baggie, you get some stickers. So if you're into that, you get those. It's a nice touch. You buy kind of an expensive item. Um, a quick start guide which is, uh, it's good. So you got your, you know, what you have uh, included. They tell you to wear insulating gloves. Um, won't, won't be doing that. Um, it'll be shipped at about 30 to 50% capacity. We're going to check that because we're going to, we're going to charge, charge it up here. They say, don't short. Um, they say when you're plugging it in, don't cross the cables over um, or don't install reverse polarity. I'm not 100% sure what they're on about there. Uh, don't connect with other brands. Um, they're telling you, make sure the power supported by the battery can meet the power demand. Yeah, it's got some ratings on here, but s some more in the manual, which I won't show you the whole manual. I'll just put the specs on screen as necessary. Um, stored between uh, 10 to 35C. 50% uh, charge level and recharge every three months. Uh, they say, don't open it. Don't put it in fire. Don't put it in water. Well, this thing is probably going to live on my boat, but in a battery box. So I think it'll be okay. So here's the manual. The quick uh, tech specs is that the operating voltage is 12.8 volts. So regular, just like a lead acid, except the voltage won't sag on this. Charging voltage is 14.4 uh, volts plus minus 0.2 volts that's 14.2 to uh, 14.6 so you should be able to charge this with a regular car alternator but i probably wouldn't connect it directly in parallel with a car battery um, most uh, car uh, alternators they'll probably output a little bit higher if they sense the voltage is low um, charging at 20 amps uh, max continuous discharge, 100 amps, and continuous output power, 
1280 watts. So these are the important things I think are important. And uh, oh yeah, you've got um, M8, M8 bolts. So these are gonna be big terminal bolts. So that's pretty nice. And then you have a, I don't know, a sales flyer? Yeah. So they show you their products and all sorts of stuff like that. Contact them, et cetera, et cetera. I will say when I order this off Amazon, they, uh, the seller have, has sent, uh, which I, I believe is just light time, which used to be ampere time um, themselves. They sent me a whole bunch of emails, you know, saying, you know, it's shipped. There's a delay because of snow. Uh, let us know if you got it, et cetera, et cetera. So it seems like the after sales care is going to be pretty good here. Uh, looks like we've got four bolts. So we got two here and two here. So they're, they look exactly the same. I'm not doing this right. I'm used to shooting top down. And there's some uh, insulating covers for the bolts, which is very nice. And a couple extra washers. So I think the deal is that when you connect your accessories to this, um, you really want to clamp down a good amount onto the terminals. So if you don't have enough wire in the terminals, um, you're going to have to make up some distance with, or enough thickness in the terminals. They're going to want you to make up some distance with some washers. And that's indeed what we have here. This is pretty much bottomed out here. Either that or I'm on the spring washer. It's hard to tell. What's nice is there is a number three Phillips head on the top of the bolt there. So that's, that's a pretty nice feature. Uh, so if you're out in the field and you don't have a, uh, you don't have a, a wrench or whatever, usually you have a Phillips. So that's pretty good. And, uh, I did find out where this, uh, special donger ring here comes from. It comes from this, uh, Ziploc. It broke off in shipping. So. I don't really care about that. The, this was on top of the foam and the uh, foam was hit quite hard on the top, but the, the battery is perfect. And this is very, very soft plastic. Just getting my fingerprints on it and then wiping it off with my shirt, uh, it's leaving scuffs on the plastic. So that tells me that uh, this plastic is very, very soft and I would have noticed an impression if it would have hit something or damaged the, the case in any way. And I'm not getting that. So that's good. Uh, now, I do want to check the voltage because unlike a lot of other lithium batteries, I don't see an on-off switch. So this thing should just be on at all times. Let me just make sure you can see that. So DC volts. And here we go. I'm making no qualms about touching these because this is very low voltage. Can you see through my arm? No, you can't. 13.18 volts. So clearly this thing is already active. So the next thing I want to do is charge this thing up, see how much capacity we have on the charge up and then discharge it and see how much capacity we have, you know, when it's fully used up. So let's get set up for that. Back to a more familiar view. And now you can see why I can't film like this. Because uh, I can only get one terminal in the shot. The other one is all the way up here. So essentially, I've got this uh, iCharger 206B. This is for uh, remote control cars, but it'll work for this. Um, the manual suggests a 20 amp uh, charge. That's what we're doing. I set have it set to lead acid, but I have it set to shut off at 14.4 volts. You can go in the settings of this particular charger and set the endpoint. Um, so I'm going to be doing that on this and we'll see how much charge it puts in, how many amp hours it puts in. You know, I want to see at what percentage this thing was shipped at. Um, if you don't know what you're doing with lithium batteries, just get a charger specifically made for lithium batteries. A lot of the newfangled lead acid batteries will allow you to charge, um, lithium. They'll have a, uh, a feature for it. It's slightly different. It's not, it's not quite the same as, you know, a typical um, lead acid battery, but it's pretty close. These things are sort of made to be drop-in replacements. So the way I'm going to do this here is I'm going to put one of the washers on. Uh, because we're only going with uh, 20 amps of current, we don't need a lot 
of, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super tight on there. Don't have to tighten it down with a wrench. What I will do though, is notice only one cable is connected right now. That's because my cables have a male end. So just to be very careful, I'm going to plug this into the, uh, to my charger. And now I'm going to handle the uh, other cable. So you really don't want to short these together. Technically, I should have a, uh, a fuse somewhere in here. But I'm hoping that the manufacturer actually has a fuse in their, um, in, in their BMS. I'm going to be careful. Don't, you know, do as I say, not as I do. So if you're going to do this, you've got to be careful as well. So I'm just going to um, stack the washer and I'm going to hold this end very carefully and I will connect this end. So again, we have voltage and I do know that in a lot of these lithium or remote control car chargers, I should say, and same thing for the lead acid ones, um, this will probably spark. So you do want to spark far away from the battery. Here it goes. I did it quick enough. I think we're okay. And then I'm going to press and hold uh, start. And then this should start charging. Checking the battery. Please wait. There we go. So charge is ramped up immediately to 20 amps. And we're just going to let this charge for a little bit and see what it gives us. And I'll bring you back when we've got those numbers. All right, it looks like the charger shut down because the BMS shut down the charge. So we're going to check the terminals in a moment here, but it looks like we got 66 and a half amp hours from its storage charge, whatever it had when it shipped here or whatever it was, you know, in storage. Um, let's confirm that there's no voltage left on the terminals, but maybe it actually recovered already. Well, let's see. Yeah, it did. So it's at 13.89 uh, uh, volts. So now the next thing is to set up a discharge and see if we can pull 100 amp hours out of this thing. They say they want the uh, storage charge at roughly 50% charge. So if that's what it is, we should get roughly 100 amp hours out of it. All right, this is what I come up with for discharging. Um, this is my ATorch uh, DL24 600 watt um, charge discharge unit. It is getting a little screwy on me. If I move this in just the right way, it seems to start the discharge. So as you can see, there's already 13 milliamp hours here. Um, this screen, if you're having issues seeing it, uh, me too. It's very, very dim. So it's not a great solution, but it's the solution I have. So I've set the constant current to 30 amps. Oh, I'm going to move this down to 30 amps exactly. Um, and we're just going to run this uh, probably until BMS cuts off. So I'm expecting this to take just over three hours. So I'm going to start it now. There we go. And I'm going to let this run while I work in the background. And I'll bring you back when we have some results. All right, I got some numbers for you. So first of all, we got 105.684 amp hours out of this thing. So more than the rated 100 amp hours, which is nice because these things will lose capacity over time. I mean, very slowly, but over time. And so we can have a little bit of degradation and still hit our rated 100 amp hours. Uh, and that is uh, 1,336.68 watt hours which is great. It's only rated for 1280. Uh, it took at 30 amp load, it took uh, three hours and 31 minutes and 11 seconds, which was uh, good because this is kind of like my use case. About 30 amps is about what I'm going to be drawing. It won't be continuous though. So this is a worst case scenario. So essentially you have three and a half hours of use at full pop. What's not so nice is the low voltage cutoff. Mind you, it was under load. Uh, was at about nine and a half volts, 9.45 volts ish, which is not great because that gives us uh, 2.3625 volts per cell. And the safe, sort of safe cutoff for lithium iron phosphate uh, cells is around two and a half volts. Now, it's not so bad because you cut off the load and the voltage creeps up very quickly. So that's not that big of a deal. But I wouldn't want to run this all the way down to nothing. 
And that's a great part about lithium batteries. They have such good capacity that typically you won't run them all the way down. It could happen, but it's not as common as, you know, a lead acid battery. Another cool thing is when we hit the rated 100 amp hours, the voltage of this thing, even under load, was 11.99 volts. So there's no way a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, it would probably be down, you know, below 11 volts before it even reaches the 100 amp hours. So that was really good to see. And don't forget that is still under load. So if you take load off, the voltage will float back up. So that's not exactly um, what it sounds like. It's actually much better than what it sounds like. And it did a 75, oh, 74.435 amp hours of discharge above its 12.6 nominal voltage. Actually, it says 12.8 nominal here, but on a 12 volt system, usually 12.6 is nominal. So it did 75 above 12.6, but that is again under load, the 30 amp load. If it was a 5 amp load, it would, it would have done probably almost its full discharge above 12.8. So in summary, there's not a chance that a lead acid battery could perform as good as this thing unless it was a 200 amp hour battery. But then instead of something that's three times the weight, you're looking at something that's six times the weight of this thing. This thing is incredibly portable. The only uh, negative I would say is that this is a group 31 battery. So it is very large. The new gens that you pay a little bit more for, uh, they're group 24. So they're actually quite a bit smaller and they have the same amount of power capacity. That's not necessarily a, a bad thing that it's group 31. You know, it gives you more space to dissipate heat. This thing didn't even go like two degrees above ambient while I was discharging it. So I'm not worried about heat. Uh, however, it is bigger. It does take up more space in your setup. So if you have this in your house or in your boat or whatever, you do have to remember that it is a little bit bigger. It's the battery size of a pickup truck battery and your, your uh, bolts stick out over the top here. So you need some space to access these. But other than that, I would say, especially if you get them on sale, like I did, um, these things are worth their weight in gold. Thanks for watching.